Welcome back to Plot Twist, my new Excel chart series where we get creative and transform boring data into unique visualizations that are sure to impress. In today's episode, we'll learn how to visualize data with a lollipop chart in Excel. Let's dive in. A lollipop chart is similar to a bar chart, but it's built using the rep function. That's right, we are actually building this entire lollipop chart using an Excel function, not a chart. Let's take a look at how. Here we have a list of representatives along with their units sold and need to visualize this data to present to our boss later. We also want to highlight who had the least number of units sold and who had the most, so that it's easy to spot the top and bottom performers. First things first, let's set up the name list for our chart. To create the name list, select the cell where you want the chart to start, set it equal to the first name in our data table, and then drag this formula down the column to fill the remaining names. Next, let's create our lollipop bars using the rep function. If you're unfamiliar with the rep function, all it does is repeat a value a specified number of times. To add lollipop bars, select the cell next to the first name, enter the rep function, and now we need to insert the character that we are repeating in double quotes as the text argument. We need to insert a dash symbol here to create the line of our lollipop. So I'm going to go ahead and press the windows and period key to open the emojis and symbols menu, and then select the dash symbol by selecting the symbols menu and choosing a dash. Close this menu and enter double quotes to complete the text argument. And now we need to select the number of units sold as the number times argument so that the function enters one dash for each unit sold. We've completed our function that creates the line of the lollipop. Now we just need to add a circle to the end of the line by inserting an ampersand symbol to combine values and then entering a circle symbol in double quotes. Once again, to insert a circle symbol, I'm going to press Windows period to open the symbols menu and this time select a circle symbol. Finish off the formula by closing this menu and adding double quotes and then fill this formula down the column to create the lollipop bars. All right, this is looking pretty good. We can now easily visualize the number of units sold for each representative, but let's take this a step further and add the unit sold values to the end of the bars as data labels. To do this, select the end of the formula in the formula bar, enter another ampersand symbol, and select the first unit sold value in cell C3 to insert this value after the circle symbol. I'm also going to add a space after the circle symbol in the formula so that there's a little bit of spacing in between our lollipop bar and the data label. Let's go ahead and fill this updated formula down the column and we've officially added data labels to our chart. Last but not least, let's finalize the chart with some formatting. I'm going to add a light border in between each row by selecting the data, opening the borders dropdown on the home tab, and choosing more borders at the bottom to open the borders dialog box. Now I'm just going to select the style and set the color of the border to light gray so that it's not overpowering our data bars, and then choose the in-between border and the bottom border. Double check the preview to make sure that everything looks good, and then hit OK to add the borders. Much better. The cool part about this chart is that because it's created directly from functions, you can format the chart using the regular text and cell formatting commands. So you can make the bars larger or smaller by updating the font size, you can update the style of the bars by selecting a different font. You can highlight certain bars using fill color, and you can even change the color of the bars using the font color dropdown. Speaking of updating the bar colors, we need to format the smallest bar red and the largest bar green to highlight the top and bottom performers. The simple way to do this would be selecting the smallest and largest bar and updating each font color, but this can be dangerous because if any of the unit sold values change in our data table, there is a possibility of the wrong bar being highlighted red or green. So if there's any chance your data is going to change, you need to use conditional formatting to format the smallest and largest bar based on the values in your data table. To create a conditional formatting rule, select the lollipop bars, open the conditional formatting dropdown on the home tab and choose new rule. Select the use a formula to determine which cells to format rule type. And now we need to enter a formula that checks to see if the data label on our bar is equal to the minimum unit sold value in our data. So first let's enter the right function to extract the data label from the bar, type the cell reference that the first data bar is in as the text argument, and enter a two as the numcares argument to extract the right two characters. 
Before we move on, we need to be careful here because this is going to return the data label as a text value, whereas the unit sold values in our data table are number values. So I'm going to multiply this result by one to convert it into a number value. Next, we just need to set this equal to the minimum value of the unit sold range. So I'm going to type an equal sign, enter the min function, and select the unit sold values as the numbers argument. This is going to find the smallest bar, so we need to format this red by pressing the format button and setting the font color to red under the font tab. Our first rule is officially complete, so let's copy our formula so that we can use it to format the largest bar, and then hit OK to apply the first rule. Now we just need to repeat this one more time to format the largest bar green, so let's add another conditional formatting rule by opening the conditional formatting dropdown again, choosing new rule, selecting the formula rule type, and pasting our formula into the formula box. This time we need to find the maximum value instead of the minimum, so we just need to swap the min function with the max function and our formula is done. Lastly, format these values green by pressing the format button, setting the font to green, and then hitting OK to apply the second rule to our data bars. Our lollipop chart is officially complete, and the best part about this chart is that it's completely dynamic. So if any of the names change, our name list will automatically update, or if any of the unit sold values change, the length and the color of the data bars will automatically update as well. And that's the sweet end to our lollipop tutorial. What are your thoughts on the lollipop chart? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episode of Plot Twist.